Hey, what's going on guys? Rudalinel here bringing you back with another Python tutorial. Let's not waste any time, let's just hop right into idle and get cracking. I'm going to create a new program here, call this uh, file.python. Get our get to start typing our our skeleton code. Python, not Pytho. Okay, let's create a class. I'm just going to use a uh, base for my class name. Define a constructor, pass in self, and pass for now, and we'll test if this is the current script. Oh, I screwed up my bracket. Alright, and then we'll do root is equal to base. Alright, now. Today, we're going to be working with the power function, or also known as the, uh, the pow. Let's see. I'll show you. It's more of a mathematical thing. It'll raise the current, uh, raise what you pass to it to the current power that you've set it to. So if we, uh, if we print out pow, we can check out here, 2 to the power of, uh, 4. How about that? We run it, and we get 16, because, uh... 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is equal 4, 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8, 2 times 2 times 2, how, do we, how many 2's do we have here? Times 2 is going to equal 16, and then we have, because then we have 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's how many 2's we have here, it's raised to the power of 2. I'm sorry, raised to the power of 4. Because this is raised to the power power of, of 2, because we have two twos. This one is raised to the power of 3. This one is raised to the power of 4. So that makes perfect sense. So let's try and recreate this all on our own. We're going to want to define a new function. Let's call this power. We'll do self, and we'll do uh, base, and then power because we're obviously going to need two arguments here. So let's uh, let's do what we need to do. First of all, we're going to test whether the power is equal to zero, because if it is, remember, you normally you would return, or at least you would get the answer of zero. So we're just going to return one, I'm sorry. We're, you get the answer of one. In all cases, I'll return zero. So let's start going here now. Let's do um, i in the range of one, because we want to start counting at one, and then all the way to the power. What we're going to need to do here is set a product variable, because this is where we're going to be able to keep track of our multiplications. So a product is going to equal base off the bat. Then we get in our, pro our, clo our code block, anyway, for the, uh, for the for loop. We can set up product is going to equal the multiplied version of base. And then when we're done looping, we can just return the product. So every time we go through this iteration, we're multiplying it by base again, and again, and again. So, let's try it. If we had, if we ran anyway, if we can print out what we get the product of, though, what, at least what we get returned, the information that we find, we can get, we can, uh, power, and we can change this to, uh, let's say, 2 and 2. If we run this, we get 4. And if we do 2 and 3, we get, uh, we get 8. Okay, if we did this to 4, we get 16, just like we did that first time. So, here, you guys can see how the power function works. If you, uh, if you keep multiplying it by whatever you had originally, it'll keep going and going and going. If you do 2 to the power of 1, it's just 2, and we can change this to whatever we want. Let's do 1 to the power, well, 10 to the power of 4. There you go. So... There's your function, people. I hope you enjoy it. It's, it's pretty simple. I mean, once you get the basis of the idea that you just repeatedly multiply whatever you're looping through, and then you have your power function. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.